Uh, I really want to thank the Chamber uh, for putting this event together and the University for hosting it. Uh, I was pleased to hear that this event has uh, become a regular event um, and that it's grown year after year. Clearly, the issues are incredibly uh, timely and important for all of us in Missouri uh, and throughout the country. Uh, and it's a real pleasure for me to be back here. I think the last time I was uh, on the University of Missouri campus is when I was a, an attendee at the Missouri Scholars Academy uh, many years ago, um, which brought together people from throughout, uh, young people from throughout the state um, to learn about uh, different topics. My, my minor, uh, I took a class in philosophy for the three weeks during the summer, uh, and also minored in a nuclear engineering class. Um, <laughs> Uh, so uh, some, some of these experiences that you have early in your life uh, carry through. Um, during uh, the time today, uh, I want to talk briefly about uh, my background and how that uh, influences how I'm approaching the department and the charge uh, that I'm giving to the, the, the people in the department as we look at uh, natural resource issues. Uh, I also am going to talk more specifically, of course, on the issue of energy uh, and utilities. And I'm going to make a couple of observations uh, and uh, some initial recommendations. Um, I have the advantage and disadvantage of this being the fifth week uh, on the job. Um, so maybe I can see some things with new eyes. Um, but I also recognize that I have a lot to, to, to hear and, and to learn from you all uh, as well. And just to sort of tell you where I'm going to go, I think observation one is that we Missourians have a lot that we can be proud of that we've done with regard to energy efficiency and renewable energy. Uh, the second observation is that there's the potential to do more, which is the opportunity piece. I think that we're also sort of external forces that are going to push us uh, to do more uh, as well. And then I've got some thoughts, just some, some thoughts about what some major stakeholders can start to do based upon what, what unique attributes and, and skills and position uh, they have. Um, so again, let me just start off briefly telling you a little bit about my background and how that's uh, influencing how I'm uh, going to lead the Department of Natural Resources. Uh, I'm from Olivet, uh, a suburb of St. Louis. Uh, my parents still live in Olivet. Uh, I went to Ladue High School um, for all of you St. Louisans. Um, and that's where I met my wife. Uh, and her parents now live in the Chesterfield area and we've got lots of family, grandparents, aunts and uncles, brother and sisters-in-laws, cousins, nephews, et cetera, uh, who live in the St. Louis and in the Moberly uh, area. Uh, when the opportunity came up to come back to Missouri after many years away, I just leapt at the opportunity um, because of the affection I have um, for the time I have spent here growing up um, and knowing that there's so much uh, that we could do here. Uh, my primary professional engagement with environmental and energy issues was as a management consultant at McKinsey and Company. There, I worked on efforts to bring together environmental groups and businesses, which both realized that they could advance their agenda by working together. So how is that possible? Uh, the environmental groups recognize that businesses have huge economic power, access to information, and delivery mechanisms, all of which can be used for environmental good um, if it's consistent with increasing shareholder profits. The businesses recognize that they operate in a social and political context uh, with which, in, in which case their engagement um, with environmental groups and other interest groups can lead to sort of easier or more difficult opportunities for them to pursue, the, pursue profit and, and their interests. Furthermore, many of the business leaders with which we worked re realized that when looking at product design, product delivery, service delivery, that by pushing their teams to think about an environmental component around efficiency and waste and, and waste minimization, that they could actually reap uh, large financial rewards. So my, my work was about what I would call the both and approach to environmental and economic issues. That's to say we need to have both environmental protection and economic development. That we can both protect our natural resources and use them wisely. And that we can find areas of mutual benefit in both the long run and in, in the short run. Part of what attracted me to DNR and what I think makes DNR valuable in these discussions is that DNR's vision and mission also have the both and approach. Well, let me read them to you for just a second. The mission of the Department of Natural Resources is to protect, preserve, and enhance Missouri's natural and cultural, uh, cultural and energy resources. Uh, the vision is that DNR envisions a Missouri where people live and work in harmony with our natural and cultural resources, making decisions that result in a quality environment and a place where we can prosper today and in the future. 
So if you didn't catch all of those both ands, let me just uh, run through a couple of them again for you. It's a Missouri where people live and work, where we make decisions that result in a quality environment and a place where we can prosper today and in the future. And that we're protecting, preserving, and enhancing the natural, cultural, and energy resources. So again, it puts together the pr protection of, of the environment and the productive use of the natural resources, both an environmental and an economic development piece. What does that mean as I think about my job each day? Well, it means that we need, I, I and the department need to have this both and approach. I've made this clear to my senior team from day one, um, and I think the actions that I've conducted so far support that. Um, for example, in the past three weeks, my senior team and I have spent many hours with uh, Director Linda Martinez and her senior team at the Department of Economic Development talking about general initiatives, um, as well as specific green companies that we would like to attract to the state or help expand inside of the state. Uh, Director Martinez and I have also made several recommendations to the governor's office in area of mutual interest, where again we can have wise use of the natural resources in a way which is productive for all of us. Uh, I believe that the governor also supports this both and approach. Uh, when he and I were talking about the position, his charge to me was to leave Missouri cleaner than it was when we came to office, to help create next generation green jobs and to implement a, an energy strategy and policy for the state. His fourth charge to me was to make sure that the operations work really well in our department, the Department of Natural Resources, so that's another both and. Advance good, thoughtful policy and provide great service to the folks that we interact with. So if this both and uh, is the approach for me and for the department, what, what's the goal? Well, my goal is a sustainable Missouri, and by that I mean three things. First, a revitalized economy, one in which every person has a job that pays good wages and a job in which he or she can use his or her talents productively. Two, a healthy environment in which we can work and play, one which we can leave with pride to our children and their children. And third, an energy platform for the revised, revitalized economy and healthy environment an energy platform that leads us, leads us to use our resources productively and provides us with price stability and other protection from you know, exterior sources of fuel, um, whether those come from the Persian Gulf, Wyoming, or Kansas. <laughs> so if that's our goal, uh, i.e. a sustainable Missouri, uh, where, are we, where are we today and what are some of the next steps uh, that we can take? Uh, again, with the appropriate discount um, that I uh, have five week eyes on how some of these things are happening in Missouri. So, as I said before, uh, I think first Missouri's done some great things with regard to energy efficiency and renewable energy. Uh, we manufacture great products. Uh, you know, the uh, Ford Escape hybrids are built by Ford at the Claycomo plant. Uh, I understand that the hundred thousandth uh, Escape hybrid rolled off the line last month, which is a great achievement. Um, you may have heard last week Smith Electric Vehicles the world's largest manufacturer of road-going commercial electric vehicles, announced that it's going to build uh, out a facility in Kansas City. Um, and it's really sort of using, although it, it can, it, it, the practical experience is coming from uh, Europe, I think it's a great example of what we in the Show Me State can do, which is not look just at the limitations of current technology, but figure out what are great applications. So in this case, some people would say, oh, we've got real limits in terms of how uh, the batteries and the weight of the batteries and how far cars can drive. Well, that's true on the one hand, but there are a lot of vehicles out there, um, utility vehicles, um, postal delivery vehicles, uh, etc., that actually drive a relatively few number of miles. So it's sort of stepping back, thinking about how can you have a great application of an existing technology. And, and I think that that's a, a strength here uh, in, in Missouri. You know, we've got great uh, engineering and consulting firms here. Uh, a couple that come to mind are you know, Birds and McDonald and, and Black and Beach, but I know that there are many others as well. Uh, these firms have earned worldwide reputations um, in engineering around energy, both renewable energy, energy efficiency, uh, and, and other aspects of working with utilities. That's a, a tremendous resource which we have uh, here in Missouri. We also have communities that are committed to renewable energy. Uh, some of you may have heard about Rockport. Um, Rockport's a city of 1,300 people in northwestern Missouri. 
that is the first city to basically to provide more power, uh, to have more power generated by wind than it actually takes to use um, uh, to, to power the power the city. Um, so then they, as a small community, are a net exporter of, of renewable uh, energy, um, and I think it can be can be a, a model in some ways for what, what communities can do in their commitment to this.